joined now by Ambassador Robert Jordan, former ambassador to Saudi Arabia, one of the countries that is not listed in the ban. He is the author of Desert Diplomat, and Ron Hira, professor at Howard University, author of Outsourcing America, a premier expert on H-1B visas. And uh, a lot of companies are very concerned about this. As a business network, mm -hmm. that truly matters. First to you, Ambassador Jordan. Uh, as I hold this up, I'm sure you've had a chance to look at it. How do you think this goes down? I just need to get your thought. Does it or does it not give the president this authority to move back with the executive order, or does it continue to temporarily suspend the ban? Well, I think the, the president is given tremendous uh, uh, broad discretion uh, in an area like this. Uh, and so this, uh, uh, this order uh, is going to have to pass a test of essentially balancing the equities. Uh, the, uh, the states would have to show a substantial likelihood of success on the merits, as well as a balancing of the hardships and the equities uh, in their favor as distinguished from uh, the government's favor. So you've, you've potentially got an argument being set up here uh, in which the government says, look, we don't know which terrorists these are. Uh, this is a profound risk to the security of the United States. And on the other hand, the states will say, well, you haven't given us one single example uh, of a terrorist mm -hmm. uh, who uh, got through the existing vetting process uh, and committed a terrorist act in the United States. So this is the tension that you have here, and it's a very close question, I think, uh, on both sides. My guess is the court ultimately will defer to the discretion of the executive. Interesting. So you think that Donald Trump will get his, his temporary ban back. Uh, this becomes a huge business story as well. And Professor Hi uh, Hira, the, the, the interesting point about all mm -hmm. of this is you have about 85,000 H-1B visa workers here in the United States. In the grand scheme of things, that is not a huge amount. However, you have these gigantic names in business. We can put some of them up and show you. A lot of Silicon Valley companies, but you also have names like Levi Strauss, who say, wait a minute, wait a minute, we, we also care and we need some of these immigrants coming in here. I can imagine there are many mm -hmm. big pharmaceutical companies that are very interested in keeping the doors to America open for great talent. But how big an issue does this become for H-1B visa holders, and should they be exempt from this ban? Uh, well, it's really a tiny issue for H-1B visas. I did the numbers for the seven countries that are affected, and it, it impacts 0.4% uh, of the H-1Bs. So this, they're a very uh, small share of the actual number of H-1Bs that are coming in. This is really a national security versus humanitarian issue. Uh, and those kinds of trade-offs. This is really not a tech worker issue. The uh, executive order really doesn't have anything to do with the labor market. Uh, so I don't really see what the economic argument is. I don't want to diminish the uh, impact on individual workers, uh, but this is a tiny share of, of the tech worker market. How about this? And, and if I play devil's advocate with, with these mm -hmm. companies who are banding together, 200 of the Fortune 500 companies right now were either founded by immigrants or founded by ch children of immigrants. That becomes a huge story too. Maybe they're looking at a much sort of longer runway here and they're not thinking of the immediate, who, who do I get to hire? What about my hiring pool for the next six months? Well, I think we always wanna be a welcoming country to the best and brightest, but that doesn't mean that we uh, shouldn't worry about national security mm -hmm. and that doesn't mean that we shouldn't clean up uh, these guest worker programs which are fraught with a lot of abuse uh, where you've got American workers training their replacements. So I think uh, the, the tech industry has tried to tie itself uh, with this issue to the, uh, the H-1B. It really isn't an H-1B issue. If they're taking a principled stance from a humanitarian standpoint, that's one thing. Yeah, two different things. Uh, but it's, it's really not affecting a large part of their workforce. It's a tiny share. Ambassador